to the latest case of political upheaval in the city of Lawrence. As you may have heard, there's yet another mayoral recall effort underway there. If you're keeping score, this is the fifth time in five years that Lawrence voters have pushed to remove a sitting mayor midterm. And it's a major headache for current mayor Dan Rivera, who, as Adam Riley tells us, had hoped to put recent memories of Lawrence's political dysfunction in the rearview mirror. Two years ago, when the scandal plagued William Lantigua was still mayor of Lawrence, challenger Dan Rivera said he was making the city look bad. When you can't get industry to come in here and talk to you because you're toxic, you can't get state and federal leaders to come and take a picture with you or bring a check um, to, for any special program, that's a problem for us. Rivera won a narrow victory, but now he's faced with a challenge that Lantigua confronted four times, a recall push that could cut his term short. Lantigua was a uh, people's uh, mayor. Uh, he knew everybody. Everybody knew him. Our current mayor, uh, I don't believe he's a people's person. City Council President Modesto Maldonado has a bevy of gripes, from Rivera's personal style to his relationship with the council to his removal of Lantigua appointees. Some of these people are suing because they feel that they were uh, politically persecuted. And I, I have a tendency to believe that. Uh, mayor Rivera practically got rid of every employee that was appointed by Mayor Antigua. Uh, there are only, I believe, two left. Maldonado expects those ex-employees to sue and to win a hefty payout. Ultimately, he says, that's why Rivera needs to go. If the mayor remains the two, in the two years that he has left, I believe the city is going to go bankrupt. But Rivera says the recall is an extension of a very close election. We won by 83 votes. I think they were collecting signatures for a recall the night that we won the recount. We actually ran on removing people from office who were unqualified, and so that's what we did. It just happens, to see, it just happens that the last administration put a lot of people that were unqualified into critical positions. There are 10 allegations on the recall affidavit, from political persecution to neglect of pedestrian safety to Rivera's opposition to the Trust Act, which limited Lawrence's cooperation with federal immigration authorities. It just becomes this like laundry list of things that people get, and you get a critical mass of people that are upset about you. You make people pay taxes, you hold people accountable for their job, uh, you know, you, you expect people to work at a higher standard. People, you change the way people have been doing business in the city for a long time. This is expected. It makes people very scared. In Lawrence, it takes just 100 signatures to start the recall process. Right now, this recall has been frozen by a challenge from Rivera's attorney. But if it proceeds, it could bolster the stereotype of Lawrence as ungovernable. Whatever happens, both the mayor and Maldonado say that stereotype is wrong. Lawrence is a wonderful city. Lawrence has so many opportunities that it offers to people, and that's why so many people come here. People on the outside have has always had the wrong perception about Lawrence, always. This is not crazy Lawrence. This is a city where basically, you know, resources are scarce. And who gets to sit in the seat of mayor gets to say where some of those resources go. And so, yeah, we're going to fight about that all the time. In a way that makes the rest of Massachusetts politics look tame. Adam Riley, WGBH News.